And we are live. So welcome everyone to today's episode of the Sports Generals. We are on patrol as usual, sitting around the virtual table. Hopefully circumstances will allow us to return to the All Sports Cleveland studio at the Ohio Media School at some point, but circumstances are not allowing us to do that right now. So let's leave it at that and move on. Yes. So anyway, with me today are the usual guys that you've come to know and love. We've got myself, Unger to the Max, but my real name is Josh, but I use my YouTube persona. We got to my right, we got Mr. Brian Fraley. And What's up? Hello, we got Mr. Manalytics as usual, Jason Vaughn. Yo. What's so up? So, what man? up, guys? What's going on? Nothing. Ready to have a good show. Yep. Let's roll. So, Let's uh, roll. today's a little bit of a somber day, huh? Because, uh, geez. It, it's, been, it's, two, it's been two years. And it still feels like a bad dream that I'm going to wake up from. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. Um, this yeah. does make, mark the anniversary of the passing of the great Mamba. Um, so rest in peace, man. It was, it was a tough day. I remember when it happened. You know, it was like, damn, what, what did they just say on the screen? Mm-hmm. It was one of those moments, man. And it's just like you hope that it wasn't true. Uh, but TMZ usually is accurate, and unfortunately, that's what happened. Yeah. Um, yeah it's one of those uh, moments in sports that, like, you'll kind of always remember where you were at when you found out the news, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that just speaks a lot to Kobe and his legacy and how impactful of a player he was, you know? The, mm-hmm. the way that – you know, all deaths impact people negatively. It's, it's never a good thing when somebody passes away, but his mm-hmm. death in particular really brought the sports world to a halt. You know, yeah. it was like I, I've never really seen anything like it across the sports world. You know, like it, yeah. you kind of see it localized in certain areas, but with Kobe, it was like basketball, baseball. It didn't matter wherever wherever you were at that day, whatever you were playing, the feeling in the gym or on the field was man, like I cannot so believe. Real. It. Yeah, yeah. He was like, if you made a list of people who were going to pass away, I feel like he would have been at the bottom. Sure, that's. <laughs> I can appreciate that, yeah. Josh. But um, I'll agree with you there. What I mean is, like, most likely to most unlikely, with the people at the bottom being like the least likely. That's what I mean, because he just had that bigger than life figure, and people mm. looked up to him so much. That like he became almost superhuman, if you he will. He changed the landscape. Yeah. He changed that's the landscape. What, yeah. That's why I'm saying like he would have been near the bottom of the list of people you least expected to pass away. Well, yeah, yeah. you know, you never appreciate you. You never expect anyone uh, to pass away, but I understand the logic to it. But um, yeah. You know, one of the best, one of probably the most comparable athlete that you could compare to Michael Jordan. Um, he yeah. had similar um, um, skill set. He had that mentality where it's, I don't care who I'm going against. I'm going to try to embarrass you. Um, if I can, I want the last shot. Uh, give me the ball. I'm not scared. And, you know, he was one of the all-time greats. Actually, in my top 10 NBA athletes of all time. Yeah, I agree with you there. He's top three for me. Mm. Yeah. What I loved so much about him was his competitive nature. Like if he was going against LeBron, you knew it was going to be like tick for tack, like Mm. scoring, like who's going to outdo who. Mm. When he was going against like the Detroit Pistons, it was, okay, I got to grind this out and it's going to be bully ball. When he was going against the Boston Celtics, he brought like that that Celtics Lakers rivalry mentality, if you know what I mean. When he was going against like Dwayne Wade, it was going to be kind of similar to his battles with LeBron. Like, 
who's going to outdo who type thing. It, that's what I loved most is like, depending on who the opponent was, he brought a different mentality. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that, that Mamba mentality, you know, it's something that he was known for. And it, it's like a, a whole attitude, a whole vibe, you know, that like uh, young kids and anybody that's coming up in a sport that they like try to strive to. It's like, who, who do you want to be like? And no matter what sport you're playing, you know, if you're playing baseball, it's, you know, you still you want to have that Mamba mentality. You want to be the first person to show up at the field. You want to be the last person to leave. You want to be a student of the game, you know, like. These are all things that Kobe did, and and that's one thing that a lot of people didn't appreciate about Kobe when he was around was how hard of a worker he really was. I'll take like, a step further. Man, go ahead. Um, playing cards. Hey, I'm a spades player. Same you got to have the, the mama yeah. mentality oh. playing spades. No, you, that, that phrase is transcendent, and you can apply that phrase. I don't know why Webster hasn't even added it to the dictionary yet. Mm -hmm. Probably they will soon, but you have to have that mentality in order to be that guy to, or that gal to be the yeah. winner. So mm -hmm. you got to have a member mentality all the time. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you, even like pop culture and things like, you know, like when anybody shoots a basket now, even if they're in the office and they shoot a, a paper, piece of paper into a basket, what do they say? Kobe, you know, like it's just like everything about the guy was just so transcendent and special. And it's just such an unfortunate thing that we, we have to cover this, but Josh, I'm really glad that you, you set aside some time for us to recognize Kobe and his Absolutely. greatness and kind of honor Absolutely. his legacy. And um, you know, what's great about Kobe is like, we all can make top five lists, maybe not just top five, actually like top 10 lists of our favorite Kobe moment. And we may have, we might each, have like three or four ones that are the same, but for the most part, they're going to be different because Kobe just had so many moments like, you know, his game winner against the Suns in the playoffs or when he dropped 81 against the Toronto Raptors or his 60 point game in his final game. Mm -hmm. right? And just to name a few, there are right. so many moments like we may have similar lists, but they're not going to be exactly the same. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of not the same, you know, we had, you know, just recently that just passed uh, was the NFL uh, divisionals. And we all had some different picks. Um, it's time to recap that gentlemen and uh, go from there. So um, yeah, let's start. The uh, Titans. <laughs> yeah, good call, Jay. Let's start with Bengals and Titans. We'll just go in order that they happen like uh, we've kind of been doing. I was um, wrong. I, I was wrong. I was <laughs> right. I <Again. laughs> You're the wrong. only one that got this right, so why don't you yeah. go ahead and start us off with uh, yeah. a little recap of what happened. I told you. I told you, but none of you guys wanted to listen. Yeah, I told you that the Bengals are legit. But mm -hmm. you guys didn't believe me. They're definitely legit. But here's my biggest concern. That offensive line for the Bengals was like a horrible. I told you like, guys. Yeah. It was like a freaking turn style. Like, hey, mm -hmm. you want to come sack Joe Burrow? Hey, mm -hmm. you want to come sack yeah, Joe Burrow? That's terrible. Yeah. You get a sack. It was like Oprah Winfrey show. Like, you get a sack, and you get a sack, and you get a sack, and you get a sack. I mean, it, it's absolutely. kind of funny because in a way, Jay and I were right because we both mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, our big concern for the Bengals was the offensive oh, line. Man, we both were yeah. talking about their defense. They had three players that had over eight sacks. They're the only team in the NFL to do that. And we were really concerned about them getting to Joey B. It's crazy. Um, and that's what happened. But unfortunately, what also happened was that Tannehill just could not uh, – he turned the ball over too many times. You know, you can't afford to turn the ball over in a game that big. And I think that was kind of the story for the Titans was just not protecting the ball. And, um, yeah, the Bengals had their way with them. So It was a testament to the um, greatness of Joe Burrow that we're starting to witness, which is despite being inside nine times, he got back up. He threw the ball. Mm -hmm. He was confident. There was not one time where I seen him – get up with the frustrated look, looking at his office line. Like, what, what the hell is going on, guys? He just got up, business as usual. You see him on the sideline, chilling, 
cool, relax, cool, calm, and collective. Mm -hmm. And Joe Burrow, man, I keep saying it, and I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep reiterating this, man. That's Joe Montana. He's the Joe. He's the coolest, smoothest quarterback that I've seen in in, in recent memory, and he led his team to a victory, man. And you must give kudos to him because he has put Bengals. Um, on the map, and he's put the NFL on notice, sp specifically the AFC North. So, uh, mm -hmm. Joe yeah. Burrow is that guy. Shout out to uh, rookie Evan McPherson, too. We don't talk a lot about special teams and how important Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, he, he won that game. He had four, uh, four field goals, two of mm. them over 50 yards, including a game winner of 52 yards as a rookie. Mm. Just – I mean, in terms of like young QB, young kicker, those guys are out cold, man. Like they both I've showed up in the biggest way. Yeah. It's like the Bengals, before Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and all these guys got there, all Bengals fans and all the team knew was losing in the playoffs. Mm. But Joe Burrow wasn't there for that. Jamar Chase wasn't there for that. Most of these guys weren't here for that. Mm hmm. So they don't know any better. But right. but here's the other thing. And I'll, we'll get to Bill's Chiefs in a little bit. And there are some people, maybe somebody here in the in on this team, that are starting to look at the rivalry between Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and starting to compare it to maybe it could be Brady Manning. I'm not – Obviously, it's not there yet, but there are people. Nice try. Saying, nice try speaking for me and saying I'm starting yeah. to agree with you because not even close, but yeah. go on. I don't know. I think he might have anyway. some merit to this. Yeah. Anyway. Mahomes is the only one who sniffed the Super Bowl. Josh Allen hasn't even got there yet. I don't want to hear about it until both of them have won no. the Super Bowl. But you didn't let me finish what I was going to say, though. Mm. What I was going to say is if, let's say – Joe. To jump ahead to the AFC Championship quick. I, we'll get back to the other games. But if Joe Burrow goes into Kansas City and beats Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah, Josh Allen is a great quarterback. I think he is the best quarterback of that 2018 draft class by a mile. But if Joe Burrow beats Patrick Mahomes at Arrowhead and goes to the Super Bowl, Oh, you better put Joe Burrow in that in that in that same sentence. Like he already beat him. You no, know, he beat him at the end of the season. And yeah, he lit them up too. But I think it's kind of it's, it's a little premature, you know, to 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 have those type of talk. We let's give let's give Joe a couple of more years. I think that's, that's fair. fair. Yeah, that's fair. I'm not trying to say it's going to become Brady Manning. Mm. It, but I think it has the potential to reach that level, possibly. Sure, got to focus on there. Boomer. You got to get Boomer a size some level first, and then yeah. graduate to it. <laughs> and we got to keep moving through. We still got three more games. We got to cover. It. We got to make right. our picks. So let's right. go on and move to the next game. It was San Fran over Green Bay. Uh, Garoppolo and the Niners got the win over Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. I was wrong about this one too. I think we all said Packers, so I think we no, were. Not me. I actually said the 49ers. And you know what? Like I stated, this is a West Coast team that could play in any type of terrain. Uh, they demonstrated that despite Jimmy Garoppolo struggling. Seemed like he was giving the game away. The throws, he made so many terrible throws. And it just so happened that they were dropped by the opposing team. But they ran the ball. Debo Samuels was phenomenal. Um, they were not rattled. The defense was getting after it, like I indicated. Fred Warner uh, was getting after it. Nick Bosa was getting – Yeah, I guess it made it, it – it put the uh, focus on Aaron Rodgers and just a continued uh, struggle that he has in the playoffs, whereas, you know, you do good in regular season, but – what about you only got one ring to show forth out of a 17 year career? So if you're to go, what's really going on? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, now he's 0 4 against San Francisco, too. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, Green Bay definitely didn't play great. That uh, certainly didn't help. 
Um, I, I, I wasn't blown away by uh, – obviously, San Francisco's offense did not pre- impress me whatsoever. They only scored 13 points. Mm. But that defense, I'm with you, Jay, man. That defense looks really, really good. And if they can still win a ball game with Jimmy Garoppolo only throwing 19 passes for 130 yards and a pick, if they can win under those circumstances, they got a good ball club. So I give you props on that one, Jason. You you saw that, and that's kind of what you were trying to to indicate was that you know you know th- these guys are tough. They got an edge to them that we, we didn't really. Us, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, they went into Green Bay and proved proved me wrong for sure. So yeah, that was a it was a very interesting matchup. Very good game for uh, for that San Francisco defense. And then in spite of the offensive struggles, they still get the W. So. Yeah, that's a team that certainly is just really dangerous in the NFC right now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I just can't believe that, you know, they – Jimmy Garoppolo was struggling, man. I'm just being frank with you guys. I seen him just look uncomfortable. And you actually indicated this on the, uh, the, the earlier show, Brian, where you said you just don't trust them. You don't trust them, and especially in the cold. Mm-hmm. And that's accurate, man. He just looked at, like he was uncomfortable. I was wondering when they were going to make a switch potentially and bring in the rookie. Cause, yeah, yeah. You know, you you traded up to the third pick for a reason. And I thought we were going to see him, especially in the cold, because you'd rather run than throw the ball. Mm-hmm. And uh, we didn't see him. So, I, you know, Jimmy G, you know, you survived, but you are still on the clock. Yes, he I is. agree. I agree 100 percent. And then uh, I just again, I want to point out real quick, this game was decided by a 45 yard field goal by Robbie Gold. So once again, uh, and, and, and on top of that, Green Bay special teams was awful. Um, they had the block kick, uh, the block punt that was returned mm-hmm. for a touchdown. Special teams is big. So, uh, yeah. I mean, we cannot emphasize enough how important special teams has been so far in these NFL playoffs. Um, another game that came down to a last second field goal. So, uh, oh, yeah, but, <laughs> unless you guys got anything more on that, um, I think we want to move up to Sunday's games because Sunday was a day of some football. I really yeah. want to talk more about those games. So, um, yeah, if you guys are ready, let's jump into that Rams versus Bucks games and uh, talk a little bit about Tom Brady's near comeback and Matt <sighs> Stafford. Uh, what, what what do we say? Exercising some of his Detroit demons. Yes. Um, one quick thing about Packers 49ers, and then I'll circle back because I wanted to say this Green Bay's that wasn't the first time Green Bay's special teams let them down, they had that happen to them throughout the year. But so I just wanted to touch on that. But anyway, circling back to Rams Buccaneers, um, first of all, I'm super excited that Tom Brady is out because. Even though I admitted and conceded that he is the GOAT last year, that doesn't mean I like him. It just doesn't. But as a fan, anyway, I'm sure he's a good person. Let me specify. I don't like him as a fan. But I'm sure he's a good person. Cool. Oh, cool. Anyway, um, you, we should have expected this. And... It kind of felt right for Matt Stafford to win the game in the way he did. Because when you think about it, what was Stafford's reputation that he can't, while he was in Detroit, that he can't win the big one, that he comes up small in playoff games and whatnot. And for Brady to and the Buccaneers to mount that comeback, Tie it up, and then Stafford not be like, "Oh, what, 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 what do I do? What do I do?" He just looked down the gun barrel and said, "Fine, this is how my story is gonna go." All right, cool. He yeah, did good. Um, I'm surprised that you know it. Like you say, he started to go very Detroitish um, in a few plays in that game, but. Uh, I think the bigger issue was Cam Akers because Cam Akers had two crucial turnovers. Um, once they were up, um, I believe they were up 21-3. to three. They could have went up 28-3, but he fumbled was on goal line. And then later on in the game, uh, when they could have uh, absolutely put the game out of reach by attaining the first down, 
he fumbles again, and he gives the Bucks light. So um, Cam Akers put the ball on the ground a couple of times. Uh, Sonny Michelle, you know, they were riding him towards the end of the season, but he didn't really get that many carries this game. Uh, but their, their Van Jefferson came into play. Um, ODB, oh, yeah. OD, yeah, um, everybody came into play, and um, it seemed like big he was time. able to shake that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome to see. Um, it was awesome to see Stafford overcome um, what what Josh was talking about. You know, he had that reputation of coming up short in big moments. Um, this is really the first time in his career that he's had a moment this this big, and he's came up in it. Um, so, shout out to Matt Stafford for keeping his cool and and under the circumstances, like you said, Cam Akers got the ball twenty four times and he fumbled it twice and very dire circumstances um you know they tried to lose this game and matt stafford was really the one that kind of galvanized the unit at the end of this game and, and put them in position to kick that game winning field goal and again here we are game winning field goal you know after all that all the scoring that went on in this game it still came down to a matt gay 30 uh 30 yard field goal so, yeah special teams coming up big again special um, teams most important do you guys think that maybe that might have been brady's last game in tampa Man, I, it feels I, I, weird. I the fact that he could, you know, retire or, you know, demand some sort of trade or what have you. You know, a lot of people were speculating he might not play another game in Tampa. The wordplay he's been using, you know, he, my, you know, my other people care about, um, and I don't know the exact quote, but basically his safety. Mm-hmm. And he's talking about wifey for those that are not familiar with the story. And, um, you know, it, usually Tom Brady is like, yeah, we're going to get him next year, or he's got that rah-rah, that mamba mentality, right? Yeah. Uh, but after this game, it just seemed like he was like, I'm not even thinking about the next five minutes from now. I just want to – that's not – Tom Brady don't really use that type of language. So it it was you a little it, off the pudding. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. I mean, it was that post-game press conference that, that kind of caught me off guard, and I, I mm. didn't even consider it until I heard the way he was talking. So, yeah. Uh, it's going to be an interesting storyline to follow in the off season, um, but we got to get to what many would say was, you know, arguably the best playoff game of all time. I know it's certainly up there. Man. Oh my action. god! So why don't we roll right into this uh, this Patrick Mahomes versus Josh Allen matchup that everybody was drooling over? Um, two of the you know top young quarterbacks in the NFL, and they both played absolutely lights out. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys take over from there. <laughs> so, first of all, the NFL absolutely needs to change their overtime rules because that whole – that rule is t- complete and total bullshit. It is bullshit. Yeah, it sucks. How, how can you do that? Like, it's happened – it happened to Patrick Mahomes two years ago yeah. where basically – if you lose the coin toss, you lost the game. How can you do that? After what? After the magic that we saw in the final two minutes of that game where it was like, oh, Kansas City's going to win. No, Buffalo's going to win. No, Kansas City. No, Buffalo. And then it comes down to overtime. Buffalo loses the coin toss, and they never get a chance to touch the football. I- what? No. That is I t- I'll tell you this. One could say, hey, you had 60 minutes to win this game. So when you need overtime, you know, I, I, I kind of won aside with the fact that he didn't get a chance to get the ball, but y'all should have won a game, which which is weird because he throws a touchdown with 13 seconds left, right? You would think he's going to win the game. I, I was jumping up and down because I bet on this game. I'm like, okay, 13 seconds left. And then, lo and behold, Mahomes go right down the field. It's a bad game. Going to overtime. But you got 60 minutes. Each team got 60 minutes to win a game. And when you can't do that, that's really a team problem. You know, like, yeah. that should handle your business. I'm going to take an interesting stance here. I'm going to agree with Josh, and I'm going to agree with Jason both. Uh, I, see this Josh, one. I agree. The overtime rule sucks. Both teams should have an opportunity to score. I, I think it's a bad rule. But what Jason said, you had 60 minutes. Not only did you have 60 minutes, uh, you just scored the game-winning touchdown with 13 seconds left. Um, you have an opportunity to squib, squib the kickoff. It. Yeah, why didn't you squib it? 
and take a minimum of three to five seconds off the clock. Minimum. Totally agree. And then you that totally. gives Patrick Mahomes one shot. He's got one shot to get it into field goal range. That's it. That's what Still. they done. If they would have done that, I'm telling you right now, if they would have done that, the Bills would have won this game and we're not having this discussion. But Josh, you're also right. That was a great game. And for Josh Allen to be denied the opportunity to score in overtime after the game he had, it's just heartbreaking and it shouldn't happen. So I'm with both of you. They should have won that game in 60 minutes, but overtime also sucks. So I'm going to flip, I'm gonna both flip this. On that one. Um, Do- so let's real quick, mm-hmm. uh, we have to run down and make our picks for um, the conference championship, and then we're going to switch segments real quick. So Bengals versus Chiefs, who you guys got? I know, Josh, you want Bengals in the Super Bowl. Are you sticking with it? Yes, I am. Bengals. Bengals. Uh, what say you, Jason? <laughs> Damn it. Let's go, Joe. <laughs> go with Joe. Let's go. go Joe. Let's go. <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, I'm sticking with the Chiefs. Um, I have the Chiefs coming out of the AFC in the Super Bowl. I'm going to stick with that. Um, I backtracked on the Bills a couple shows ago, remember, and I switched them out, and I said, I, I don't know. They haven't been looking good. The Chiefs look good. I'm going to pick them. So I'm not going to turn on them now, but you guys both got me um, on the Joey B bandwagon big time. Uh, I'm going to take the Bengals here to cover the seven points, but I think Kansas City wins a close one. Oh, it's seven. Wow. Yeah. Seven Are points, sure? man. Just a quick thing. I know we have to get to Ram, uh, 49ers Ram, but just real quick. We did see Chiefs Bengals in the regular season. I know it was regular season, and yes, the game was in Cincinnati, but I want you to think about this. Most teams, when Kansas City gets up on teams like how they did against the Bengals, most teams fold and pack it in and say, okay, we're done. The Bengals did not do that. Joe Joe Burrow was able to lead them on a couple drives towards the end of that first half to really get them back in that game, and they found themselves. I don't think they're intimidated by Kansas City. I think they feel like we can hang with these guys. We know we can. So, yeah, that's the main reason I'm taking the Bengals. They're not intimidated by the Chiefs. Yeah, I don't think they're intimidated by anybody at this point. I do agree with you on that, Josh. Uh, We got one more game to pick, and then we got to move on. So 49ers, Rams. Uh, I'll start this one off since I ended the last one. Um, I'm going with Matt Stafford and the Rams. I really like what I saw from from Stafford. Um, I just don't see the 49ers offense keeping up with L.A.'s offense. I think Stafford's going to have a big day. Cut's going to have a big day. I think OBJ is going to get involved in this game. Um, Cam Akers isn't going to turn the ball over. You know, he's going to be safer with the ball. Um, so I'm going to go with the Rams. What say you? I am also going with the Rams. Um, part of my reason is because no offense to the 49ers, but I think if they were to make the Super Bowl – it would be a bit of a boring game because they don't have the offensive firepower that Kansas City, Cincinnati, or the Rams do. So I, I don't think it would make for an entertaining game. I think guys like me and Jason would really enjoy the defensive effort, I but I agree with you, Josh. I think for the most part, the general public would be bored with the San, Fran- uh, San Francisco in a Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I hate to be the bear of bad news to America and you two guys, but um, – Hey, 49ers, Shanahan, 6 and 0 against McVay. Okay. Oh. That's there's some smoke to that. Mm-hmm. Um every time these teams play, I've seen every last one of these games, 49ers are always the more physical ball, ball club. They always run straight towards Dono. They run at their throats. Rams are real finesse when it comes to playing against the 49ers. Um, Shanahan just simply owns McVay, and I'm starting to think this getting into this head. When they played last time, uh, and the Rams were up, okay? I seen McVay on the sideline talking to the entire team, which that was kind of weird to me, but he's trying to get the troops motivated, and you can see, like, in their mind, they've already checked out because they're like, damn, there's nothing we can do. This team is – they're tougher than us, you know. Like, it, I just see the 49ers just, just dominating them. And I see a repeat, a three time repeat Cincinnati versus San Francisco in the Super Bowl. I love All right. it. I love it. 
I got an X factor for this game. Go for it. I got the Rams tight end Tyler Higby. I think. Ooh, juicy. I like that. He let me down in fantasy football. I, I really feel some way about him. Yeah. <laughs> I won my fantasy football championship, so I'm good. I won um, one. Best team ever. Shout out to Avon Darst, Barksdale football team. Shout out. Shout out. One seed. All right. Well, everybody stick for in. Uh, so what we want to do, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, wrestling. We had a really cool opportunity as a show. We got to uh, talk a little bit with Max Caster from the AEW. We're going to show you that interview later on in the show. Um, but we're just going to kind of do a little bit of wrestling talk here just to kind of wet everybody's palate and give us a nice transition into the conversation with Max. So, mm-hmm. Josh, uh, you're probably the biggest re- uh, wrestling fan in the room. So why don't you start the segment off for us um, and just tell us, like, you know, why you love wrestling and, and what got you into it. Yeah. Um, first of all, I just put the link in the chat. So subscribe to TSG on YouTube. Um, so definitely. Like and subscribe. Like yep. and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. So definitely go and do that. But. In terms of why I enjoy wrestling, um, I've always been a big combat sports fan. Um, I just think it's really cool to see the storylines, how they develop, and who becomes the baby face, which is the good guy, and who becomes the heel, that's the bad guy. Right. And what the storyline or feud is about um and there's so many different types of matches Mm -hmm. wrestling i can't even name like all of them there's just way too many but it it depends company to company like with aew it feels so real like you know, when MJF and Darby Allen, for example, were feuding, they brought in real life stuff, like how Darby Allen's uncle was involved in a major car accident. Like mm. MJF brought that type of thing up. And like they use real life stuff. And they, like tonight at AEW Dynamite from the Wolstein Center, they're doing a lights out, no disqualification match between Orange Cassidy and Adam Cole. So they're probably going to use like, in these types of matches, I've seen wrestlers get thumbtacks stuck into their back. Mm. I've seen <laughs> like bats with barbed wire wrapped around them get twonked right into somebody's like side. I've seen matches where, like, fluorescent tube bulbs get smacked over each other's heads. Or, like, a pizza cutter getting used on somebody's head. Like, okay. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) It's a very physical physical, um, match in AEW. It's a lot of of high-flying acrobats or acrobatics, too. Like, there's some very skilled moves that take place in AEW. Um, that seems like you don't see in every match um, in other promotions. Correct. It seems like every single fight that I've seen in AEW is like, man, these guys are so talented in the ring. And like Josh, like you were saying, like the feuds feel real, you know, like yeah, it, it's actually some juice to them. And, and I don't mean this in a bad way or in like a derogatory way, but like this is kind of like a, it's like a, it's like a play for men. You know what I mean? It's like a performance for men that like is like, it's, it's, uh, there are this, women too. Yeah, yeah, and it's like uh, it, it, it's the drama and the feuds and the storylines. It's like uh, you know you can draw comparisons to pop culture and and other things that people follow. You know, correct. This is like a really exciting, like brutal action where you're you're seeing real blood, you're seeing real punches, you're seeing real hits. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's impressive. I'm I'm really kind of blown away by by what I've seen from AEW yeah. and what they're doing. What I've seen, one thing that caught me off guard or that shocked me with AEW was I mean like you guys said the authenticness that goes with the show. Uh but from Max Castle was the only person I've ever seen that would freestyle 
and talk about his, his opponent mm-hmm. while he's on the ring to him. And it seemed like he wins the battle off the ring, or outside the ring, rather, mm-hmm. and get into their head, because he's saying some real personal, some tough stuff to them. But you'd be yeah. like, whoa. <laughs> like, I, yeah, it's fight awesome. for real. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. guys get to see a little bit of that interview later. You know, you're right. He he mentioned that. Um, he actually yeah. asked us about what to include in his rap about Cleveland. Oh, yeah, yeah. So stay tuned, guys, because uh, he's gonna write some good material about uh, Cleveland tonight. We gave him some uh, some ammo, some stuff that um, oh, inside man. Cleveland jokes and things. He likes to get under the skin of the crowd, so I'm sure at the Wolfstein Center, he's gonna bring it tonight. Make yeah. sure you guys listen for his walkout freestyle tonight because he's going to bring it, and you'll get a little piece of me and Josh and Jason in that uh, too because we got to contribute some right. more. Right, and if it's not tonight on Dynamite, it might be – don't worry. It might be Friday night on Rampage. They are two different shows. You are getting AEW Dynamite tonight, although they're titling it as Beach Break. So it's a special show. It's their it's their rip riff off of a pay-per-view. Because AEW only does four pay-per-views a year. So this is like a TV special that they're doing tonight. Um so it'll either happen tonight or Friday for Rampage. We'll keep y'all posted though. Yes. No, I'm not an avid wrestler fan. Um, as you guys, I'm probably a little bit older, but um when I was growing up, you know, my favorite wrestlers was Ultimate Warrior, Paul Kogan. Mm-hmm. And as a kid, I was torn when those two went against each other. You know, like, I, you had to pick a side. Mm-hmm. And I wanted, you know, the good side of me wanted to go with Hulk Hogan. I'm like, hey, man, let's go with the Ultimate Warrior because that's, the, that's the, the, the new blood in the game. Mm-hmm. And you the Ravishing Rick Rule was one of the a villain of villains, you know. But, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's changed. Times have changed till now. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a different feel. Um, but yeah, anybody who has a chance, if you're watching the show, get yourself tickets to go check out Max, Max Caster and the rest of the boys at AEW. Um, either tonight Max. or if you can go if you can go this weekend, go. I'm I'm telling you guys, whether you're a fan or not, it's it's electrifying. It's so much fun. It's a great yeah. value. Definitely go check it out. Um but, yeah, guys, if you got any last thoughts, um Usually we go for an hour. Today we're going to cut things off about 25 minutes early because we got about 25 to 30 minute interview with Max Caster. We really want everybody to see. Um, so after this live video, stay stay tuned. We're going to get that up as soon as we can for you guys. Um, but yeah, Josh, do you want to say anything about the the interview or how it went, and then we'll leave it at that? No, I'm good. I want to keep it a surprise for everyone, but I want to give a shout out to this guy down here. He. He does an amazing job editing our videos. Oh, appreciate that, man. So, yes. huge. Yeah, shout out to Jason. He's he's the one that that makes the machine work, the behind the scenes machine. Yes, Jason. He's appreciate down that. there pulling the levers, and he knows what he's doing because Josh and I aren't so great at that. Appreciate yeah. that, man. We, we all yeah. we all won, man. So, yeah, mm-hmm. Brian we all and I. Doing it. Hey, teamwork. Brian and I try to help. But Jason's like, no, nah, I got it, dude. <laughs> nah, I got it. But- yeah, I'm, I'm so excited, though. This interview was so much fun. You guys are going to love it. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be it from us for today. Um, mm-hmm. Make sure you tune in next week. Um, like and subscribe. You'll get the notification when we're going live again. Um, so, yeah, we're going to let um, let this go, and then we're going to show you guys what we have with Max. Yep. Go Cavs. And, yes, go Cavs. Beat the Milwaukee Bucks. Let's. Yes. Go. We'll end on that. Beat the Bucks. Let's go, Cavs. Thanks for watching, guys.